All right, good morning and welcome to Matins on this Friday of the 19th week of Pentecost. Thank you for being here. Uh, Today we will be using Psalm 148. We'll be reading from Esther chapter 8 and we will finish up Acts chapter 19. Uh, Let's take a moment and pray that we would be focused on God's word and would hear it the way he wants us to hear it. Please pray with me. Blessed Lord, you speak to us through the Holy Scriptures. Grant that we may hear, read, respect, learn, and make them our own in such a way that the enduring benefit and comfort of the Word will help us grasp and hold the blessed hope of everlasting life given us through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. O come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. Psalm 148. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all you angels of his. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, heaven of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He made them stand fast forever and ever. He gave them a law which shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind doing his will, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and winged birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world, young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name only is exalted. His splendor is over earth and heaven. He has raised up strength for his people and praise for all his loyal servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near him. Hallelujah. Let us pray. God, most high, by your word you created a wondrous universe. And through your spirit, you breathed into it the breath of life. Accept creation's hymn of praise from our lips, and let the praise that is sung in heaven resound in the heart of every creature on earth, to the glory of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. All right, so... Esther chapter 9, if you remember yesterday, Mordecai has been found out and hanged on his own gallows. So we begin with verse 1. On that day, King Ahasuerus gave to Queen Esther the house of Haman, the enemy of the Jews. And Mordecai came before the king, for Esther had told what he was to her. 
And the king took off his signet ring, which he had taken from Haman, and gave it to Mordecai. And Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. Then Esther spoke again to the king. She fell at his feet and wept and pleaded with him to avert the evil plan of Haman the Agagite and the plot that he had devised against the Jews. When the king held out the golden scepter to Esther, Esther rose and stood before the king, and she said, If it please the king, and if I have found favor in his sight, and if the thing seems right before the king, and I am pleasing in his eyes, let an order be written to revoke the letters devised by Haman the Agagite, the son of Hamedatha, which he wrote to destroy the Jews, who are in all the provinces of the king. For how can I bear to see the calamity that is coming to my people? Or how can I bear to see the destruction of my kindred? Then King Ahasuerus said to Queen Esther and to Mordecai the Jew, Behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman, and they have hanged him on the gallows, because he intended to lay hands on the Jews. But you may write as you please with regard to the Jews in the name of the king, and seal it with the king's ring for an edict written in the name of the king and sealed with the king's ring cannot be revoked. Then Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal robes of blue and white with a great golden crown and a robe of fine linen and purple. And the city of Susa shouted and rejoiced. The Jews had light and gladness and joy and honor. And in every province and in every city, wherever the king's command and his edict reach, reached, there was gladness and joy among the Jews, a feast and a holiday. And many from the peoples of the country declared themselves Jews, for fear of the Jews had fallen on them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay. Acts chapter 19. We will read verses 21 to 41. Now, after these events, Paul resolved in the Spirit to pass through Macedonia and Achaia and go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. And having sent into Macedonia two of his helpers, Timothy and Erastus, he himself stayed in Asia for a while. About that time, there arose no little disturbance concerning the way. For a man named Demetrius, a silversmith, who made silver shrines of Artemis, brought no little business to the craftsmen. These he gathered together with the workmen in similar trades and said, Men, you know that from this business we have our wealth. And you see and hear that not only in Ephesus, but in almost all of Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away a great many people, saying that gods made with hands are not gods. And there is danger not only that this trait of ours may come into disrepute, but also that the temple of the great goddess Artemis may be counted as nothing, and that she may even be deposed from her magnificence, she whom all Asia and the world worship. When they heard this, they were enraged and were crying out, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. So the city was filled with the confusion, and they rushed together into the theater, dragging with them Gaius and Aristarchus, Macedonians who were Paul's companions in travel. But when Paul wished to go in among the crowd, the disciples would not let him. And even some of the Asiarchs, who were friends of his, sent to him and were urging him not to venture into the theater. Now some cried out one thing, some another, 
for the assembly was in confusion, and most of them did not know why they had come together. Some of the crowd prompted Alexander, whom the Jews had put forward. And Alexander, motioning with his hand, wanted to make a defense to the crowd. But when they recognized that he was a Jew, for about two hours, they all cried out with one voice, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. And when the town clerk had quieted the crowd, he said, Men of Ephesus, who is there who does not know that the city of the Ephesians is temple keeper of the great Artemis and of the sacred stone that fell from the sky? Seeing then that these things cannot be denied, you ought to be quiet and do nothing rash. For you have brought these men here who are neither sacrilegious nor blasphemers of our goddess. If, therefore, Demetrius and the craftsmen with him have a complaint against anyone, the courts are open, and there are proconsuls. Let them bring charges against one another. But if you seek anything further, it shall be settled in the regular assembly. For we really are in danger of being charged with rioting today, since there is no cause that we can give to justify this commotion. And when he had said these things, he dismissed the assembly. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Thou hast brought us to this place, O God, by all our several ways, ever keeping faith with us for all our unfaithfulness. Go before us still, we beseech thee, by thy word and spirit, leading us from this day forth, where it shall please thee. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy and hear us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy and hear us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy and hear us. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. O Lord, I cry to you for help. In the morning my prayer comes before you. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Let my mouth be full of your praise and your glory all the day long. Every day will I praise you and praise your name forever and ever. 
Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation, O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the seas that are far away. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. He redeems my life from the grave and crowns me with mercy and loving kindness. Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come before you. Let us pray. O Lord, almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome in adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Esther, yesterday eliminated the architect of the destruction of her people, but she did not undo the plan. So Haman has been taken care of, and the king sided with her. So that was a good sign. But if you remember, he said, what is your wish and what is your request? Her wish was to spare her life. Her request was to spare the lives of her people. So she has been spared. Haman has been hanged. So now she asks to speak to him again, and she again approaches him with great respect. If it please the king, if I have found favor in his sight. Now first she fell at his feet and wept, pleaded with him to avert Haman's evil plan. So she is now saying, if I have found, if it please the king, if I have found favor in his sight, and if it, if the thing seems right before the king, and I am pleasing in his eyes, if all four of those things, one, two, three, four, if all four of those are true, let an order be written to revoke the letters devised by Haman the Agagite, the son of Hamedatha, which he wrote to destroy the Jews who are in all the provinces of the king. And the king just doesn't even hesitate. I've given Esther the house of Haman. They have hanged Haman in the gallows because he intended to lay hands on the Jews. You may write as you please with regard to the Jews in the name of the king and seal it with the king's ring. Did she give him the ring? Yes. The king took off his signet ring, which he had given from Haman, which he had given to Haman, took it from him, and gave it to Mordecai. So Mordecai now has the authority of the king. He can write an edict, seal it with the king's ring. For an edict written in the name of the king and sealed with the king's ring cannot be revoked. That's quite a bit of power. That's quite a bit of power. I would say that's nearly as much power as... Joseph had with Pharaoh. And the part we skipped is that they summoned the king's scribes and it talks about how the edict was written and it was sent in many different languages. So then Mordecai left the king's presence and he was dressed no longer in sackcloth and ashes. Now he's in royal robes of blue and white with a great golden crown and a robe of fine linen and purple. Yeah, the Jews have been saved because of the bravery of one woman. We can't, for, we can't ever forget that. It wasn't Mordecai, it was Esther. So, and we will read, yeah, tomorrow we'll read chapter 9 about how the Jews get their revenge. All right, let's talk about Acts. So, 
there's a riot. Um, remember yesterday, um, they they had a um, confrontation with a with an evil spirit by uh, sons of a Jewish high priest who didn't really believe in Jesus, but decided to use his name to invoke power over this evil spirit, and it didn't work. Um, but when when it all was dealt with. Um, the people who believed, who who had used magic and divulged their practices, they brought their books and magic arts and burned them. And it was about 50,000 pieces of silver worth. This was a lot. Which means people are turning away from the pagan gods. The gospel is spreading. It's growing. That means the older god, the the... The Greek gods, the pagan gods, are losing their influence. And now we see how it's affecting the economy. <clears throat> the economy, um, particularly the craftsmen, we have a silversmith named Demetrius. Well, he used to make silver shrines to Artemis. <laughs> That's not happening anymore. So he gets the, his fellow craftsmen says, hey, we're losing our livelihood. This Paul is making it where we're not going to have any business anymore. Because the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob does not want idols made. So they get angry and they start singing the praises of Artemis. Artemis is a, is a Greek goddess. Um, Artemis of the Ephesians was a fertility goddess. I used to know more about her. I believe she was a twin. I think she was the goddess of the moon for the Greeks, where Apollo was the god of the sun. I think they were brother and sister. Anyway, she was worshipped widely around the continent of Asia. Um, so they go out and they find some of these, um, some of Paul's companions, named here Aristarchus and Gaius, and they started a riot, and they dragged him into the theater, and Paul wanted to go in, but they wouldn't let him. His friends wouldn't let him, um, and I'm not sure who these Asiarchs, it says men of substance and influence, they didn't think it was wise for him to get into the fray, which is probably smart, because Demetrius named Paul by name and started the riot, so... Um, if Paul had gotten there, he, he could have been killed easily. So, so these people who, who know the culture there, know the, the setting, um, kept him from making himself vulnerable. Um, and then they get this Jew. I don't know why. It's, some of the crowd prompted Alexander, and he was going to make a defense to the crowd, but when they saw he was a Jew... For about two hours, they all cried out with one voice, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. So, you know, you can't really... <laughs> you got a whole crowd shouting something. One man's voice is not going to overcome that. And then the town clerk basically says, This needs to be taken up in our courts, basically. It says... Um, we all could be charged with rioting today. They're still part of the Roman Empire. So the Romans could have come in and arrested them because we, he says we, there is no cause that we can give to justify this commotion. When he said these things, he dismissed the assembly. Now, it says here the Roman government took a dim view of rioting and the town clerk warns the crowd it's close to crossing the line from assembling into rioting. Um... So Roman administrators of provinces such as Asia were given the title proconsul. They were also the supreme judges of their territory. So he's saying, take it before the proconsul. I don't know why they listened to the town clerk, but it shows, upon, like the other stories we've been reading lately, this shows one more example of problems that 
believers in Christ will sometimes encounter, um, that, that opponents of the gospel will cause trouble, that sometimes believers in Christ may suffer unjustly, or maybe justly because they have sinned. Either way, Christ is with us, and we can't forget that. Um, it could have easily gone very poorly for Paul and his followers, but this official stepped in and calmed things down. So, and we're going to read tomorrow how Paul responds to this, but, um, you know, I, if you've heard me preach at all this year, you've heard me say, nowhere in this book does a true spokesperson for God whether that's an apostle of Christ, Christ himself, one of the prophets, nowhere does a true prophet or any of those people say that a life of faith is going to be easy. We never hear that. That is never promised to us. What we are promised is that no matter how hard it gets, God will never leave us alone. That he will always be with us. That he will send his helper, the Holy Spirit. That We can surround each other as brothers and sisters so that we are not alone. Um, Sometimes you can see God's hand at work very clearly. Sometimes it's not so clear when you're in the middle of it. But when you look back on it, there's just no question. We have to keep ourselves open to that, that God works in ways that we just don't understand. But he does work. Okay, that's a good place to stop for the day. Would you please pray with me? Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending by paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now may the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. All right. That concludes our matins for this Friday. Thank you so much for spending some time in the Word with me and for giving back to God a little bit of the day He has given to you. Um, Please do continue to be in prayer. Prayer for our brothers and sisters who are hurting right now. We have several who are hurting greatly. Um, and for our country and, and our, our government. Crazy times. Um, if any of you have prayer requests, I hope you will share them with us, with me at least, so we can lift you up as we are called to do as brothers and sisters in Christ. And uh, we will continue our progression through the book of Esther and the book of Acts. Next week, I am going to be on vacation and taking some time off that I have not taken off yet this year. So uh, I won't be doing any any videos, but I will make sure that the lessons for each day are posted so you can keep up with them. And we will resume videos again on the 26th of October, which is Monday. Um, but uh, I, will, I will have a... We will do this tomorrow on Saturday, and that will be our last one for the week. Uh, we will broadcast the Sunday worship services, um, but uh, the daily ones will be um, on hold until I get back. Okay? So, but again, I will see you tomorrow, and until, I, until we are together again, may God bless and keep you.